Hey guys, in this video, we will be looking at putting in functionality that allows us to view one record's details at a time. In our previous video, we will have configured this page that is on screen here by the name of viewrecords.php. And the purpose of this page was to list all of the records currently in our database, or at least the attendees table. Now the task up ahead is to allow us to be able to click on one record and view only details related to this record. To do this, we will be building a new page and we will call it view.php. And the sole purpose of view is to receive an ID value as printed here in this ID column or that unique identifier from the database and bring back the record with all the details for that ID. So back in our project, we go ahead and build and create a new file, and we call this one view.php. As usual, to maintain consistency, we need to make reference to our header and footer. So I'll just copy these blocks from an existing page and add the header and the footer code. Then having done that, we will just rename the title view record so we have view records which is bringing back all of them in a tabular form in view record we intend to only see one record at a time so i'm going to just remove this code reference that is calling get attendees because we're going to need a new function to get one record everything else can remain as we still need the header and we still mean uh, require our database connection Next, I'm going to go ahead and go back to our view records page, and I'm going to add an additional column. So this one will be called actions. So I'm adding an additional table header, and I'm going to call it actions. And actions, well, for this video, we will be putting one button there, but eventually we'll want to put in functionality to say, well, view the details like we're about to do, but also edit and delete per row. So we have the column that says actions, but then we're going to modify our row code and we're going to add a new column to be added with each row for each record. So I'm just opening and closing the TD. And then in this space, what we want to do is print an anchor tag that has the sole purpose of navigating to view.php and passing in our query string with the ID value. Now, all of that was a mouthful, so you can just pay attention and I'll go over it again. So first, we start with an anchor tag. And I'm just going to open and close my anchor tag and make the href be equal to, and then we're going to say view.php. And I'm just going to write the text view. And then I'm going to want my anchor tag to look sort, sort of like a button. So I'm going to put on my bootstrap classes. So I'm going to say class equals, and we're going to use BTN for the button. And I want it to be a blue button. So I'm going to say primary. Now, as it stands, what will happen is that it's going to generate for each row that we would have seen before. Now we're supposed to have another column and that column is going to have a link called, well, view. So if I refresh the page after making all those changes and saving, then we see exactly that. Now we have an actions column and we have a button that says view. And if we click on view, it navigates to our newly created view page. Now the problem here is that every one of them is saying just view.php, view.php. So all of them would navigate to the same space, which is fine up to some extent. But what we really want is the ability that to print out all of these details on that particular page. Now, the scenario is that it's because we have a small table working with with only five, six fields, it's fine. But if we weren't printing out, say, the person's date of birth in this list, and maybe we weren't showing their contact number in this list, you would have to go to view details to see the rest of their profile, then that is where this view page really comes into play. So just to drive home the context, I'm, a, I'm going to remove the email address, contact number, and uh, date of birth from the listing. So when we go to our view records, table to view all who are 
have listed that they are going to attend. All we see is their first name, their last name, and their specialty. And then we'll get the option to view more details. So I'm just going to remove the table headers. And then I'm going to remove the corresponding table columns that would have come up for each of those records. All right, so having done that, we see that we have fewer columns than we had before. And the expectation is that when we click view, we see the person's full profile, just like when, when they would have completed the registration and they would see that bit of information being presented. So what I'm going to do is borrow the code that would have given that representation. So that code was on the success page where we kind of created like that little card with their information. So I'm just going to borrow all of this HTML here and I'm going to put it on my view page. So at the end of the day, what we need to do is make sure that the corresponding values per well, for the printout of the person's details, we need to make sure that we're fetching the values for contact number, email address, date of birth, and everything else. Now that we've done the client side stuff, the interface stuff to some extent, what we're going to do is also get our hands dirty and go into our crud.php, which is where we're storing all of our database related functionality. And then I'm going to create a new function and I'm going to call it public function get attendee details and then this one is going to take a parameter called id and just for so i like to group my code i like to group all the code that's related so we have insert attendees up here we have get attendees here so i'm just going to write this one here above the get specialties because i like to see where all the related functions are now that we have set up the skeleton for our function, the code is going to look similar to the function above it for get all attendees, where we have a variable called SQL. And in this variable, we're putting in the query where we say select star from attendee, so that's the table name, where, and then we need to pass in that placeholder. So we're going to say attendee, underscore ID because that's the name of our primary key column is equal to that placeholder ID. And then having done that, we're going to prepare the statement. So next we prepare it. So I'm going to say STMT is equal to, and we call on our object, this points to DB points to our arrow and we call our function prepare and pass in our SQL statement. And then after that, what we need to do is bind the params. So we call back our object STMT, and then we call the function in that one that's called bind param. So I hope you guys see that this is really just a pattern. If you've done it before, which we did already, then it's pretty much the same pattern every time you need to do it afterwards. So we're passing in our ID placeholder and binding it to the value that came in through our parameter. And then after all that is said and done, we want to store the results. So I'm going to say result is equal to STMT and then we execute. So just to review this, we have our SQL statement, which is getting all the columns so select star from means get me all the columns from this table where the attendee id is equal to some placeholder which we would have kind of defined before now and we should have an idea as to what those placeholders are for and then after it prepares that statement we bind this placeholder to whatever value came in in the parameter now, the expectation is that the value coming in from this parameter should match the ID for the column that we wish to view. So if it is that we wish to view column five or row number five or the record with ID five, when I click view, we expect that it should invoke this function call passing five, then running this select query to get the attendee record with ID five and then return it 
to result and then the end result is that we need to return whatever comes back in this object so now that we have the sql and the P the heavy lifting php part out of the way the next thing we want to do is go back to view records and make sure that our view link actually sends over that id so what we're about to do is use what we call a query string now we would have looked at query strings earlier when we looked at how the get function works for forms remember that the get function would have passed a whole bunch of things in the url and those variables we could have gotten the values associated with those variables using our get super variable so the thing is you can actually create your own query string. So in this situation, we have href equals view.php. What I'm going to do is create a query string by using the question mark and then creating a variable name. So I'm just going to call it ID. And then I'm going to say this ID needs to be equal to some value. So the value that it needs to be equal to is whatever the attendee ID is for the row that is being printed. So remember that this is the per row uh, per, per row code, all right? So for each row that it generates or prints out this attendee ID column and the first name, the last name and the name, I want it to give me an anchor tag that is going to navigate to the view page and passing the query string variable ID with the value that is well found here in attendee ID. So I need to make sure that in after the ID equals portion, the next thing that comes after that should have the same value as what would have been printed in the number column for that row. So I can actually just take this PHP block that is echoing that value, copy it and place it right here inside of the quotation marks. So once again, this is going to generate a link and the href is going to be view.php and we're creating our own query string. So I'm saying, question mark, and then some variable name. So you could call this anything you wanted. If you feel more comfortable saying attendee underscore ID there, that's fine. Just to remember that that is the variable name that you need to look for on the next side. So I'm calling it ID, and then I'm saying that it should be equal to, and then I'm just going to put in my PHP block because I can stick those almost anywhere, and then echo the value that is actually coming back for that row. So the same value that is printed out to the left that is visible to the user. If you decide to keep it there, you could take it off. It doesn't really matter. But it, whatever that value is should be appended to the URL once this anchor tag is generated. All right, so let's test that theory. I'm going to make those changes, save those changes, refresh this page. And then if you hover over the button and you look to the bottom left corner of my screen, you see localhost slash attendance slash view.php ID equals two. So notice that this one says two, this number is two. If I go down to the one that says nine, notice that the ID number in the URL is nine. If that is too small for you to see, I'll just inspect elements so that we can see it more clearly and you see view.php ID is nine. So it is very relative and per row, it's going to have a different value. So this one is five and so on and so forth. All right, so now that we have the ID being passed into the view.php page, we now need to retrofit our view.php page to run the query and then get all the values that are coming back and by extension, print them. Now back on our view page, I'm just going to modify this comment. So I'm just going to say get attendee by ID. All right, so that we know exactly what we're doing. And then I'm going to start off by saying if is set. So this is a nice function that allows us to check if the if some variable exists and it's usually used when moving between pages and usually used when you have query strings. We would have looked at it when we were doing our success.php where we said if is set, submit, then do something, right? So it's the same concept. So in this case, I want to check if the get variable has some subscript by the name of ID. So if is set get ID, meaning if this subscript exists in this variable, right? That's what that is saying. Then we want to take some form of action 
else we want to take another course of action. So if it's there, then we want to proceed to print out the person's details. So if not, I'm going to just write the if not scenario first. Sorry, I'm just going to echo. So I can just echo to the screen, uh, possibly an H1 tag that has an error. So I'm going to say, please check details and try again. So we're giving them an error message that, okay, maybe you got here by accident. So that's, that's what the person should get if they just typed in view.php because the ID doesn't exist. So it's wrong, all right? And I'm going to put in the text, sorry, the class for danger text. So I'm going to use single quotes for that part. So big red text to say you got here incorrectly. Now, if the ID value does exist, then what we want to do is call on our CRUD object. And well, firstly, we need a variable. So we're going to say result or R or something. Is it going to be equal to CRUD? And then we're going to call our get attendee. And I'll just go back here and make sure I'm writing the function properly. So it's get attendee details. So I'm just going to copy this, get attendee details. And I'm going to put in the get super variable. I personally, I don't like doing that. I like putting the variables, sorry, the, the super variable values in another variable. So I'm going to declare a variable ID. And then I'm going to make this ID be equal to whatever value is coming over. So it's going to be equal to whatever value is in the super variable here. And then I'm going to use that variable in my function call. So I think this looks a bit neater. It would work either way, but this is just me opining on how I think it should look. So now that we've done all of that and we have result, what happens is that result is now our array or our variable that is an array that has all of the values, first name, last name, and specialty. So I took the code from the previous page where we were posting that data. Now I'm actually going to replace that post with the result variable. So this was just copy and paste code. You don't have to write the post, then write result instead. I'm just showing you that now instead of using the post, we're using result because result is housing the data coming from the database. So I'm just going to go ahead and replace all the posts here, but we're still echoing and we're still interacting with each value via its, its subscript name. So now that we've done all of this, we're going to go back to our page and look, and that is what we get. And that is what we should be getting because I left out a step. So just work with me now. We have crud.php and it's saying that there's an error on line 46. If I go back to the crud file and look at line 46, I did indeed miss a step. So what I should have said here was result. So we had result is equal to execute. And if we did that, that's what we started off with, then we would have gotten nothing coming back, all right? So what we need to do is actually take this result equals, take, take that part of the code out. And then what we're going to do is create another line in line, actually line 46 and say result is equal to, and we're going to say STMT and call the function called fetch, all right? So I'm going to explain this. So what would have happened is that all of this would have executed our query and that's all fine and dandy. But then because we only want back one row, really and truly, we're taking just this one record where the ID is equal to that. We have to use this function called fetch, which is actually just going to give us that one thing. So that's, that's one thing to remember when it is you're using PDO. So when you're looking at multiple, then just doing execute, that's perfectly fine, but otherwise you want to say fetch and you put fetch, you fetch the record into one variable and you return that variable. And then in the view part, well, whatever is fetched and put into and returned by this function is put into this variable. And then we use that variable throughout. So when I go back and I refresh, I'm now seeing 
at least some data about some other errors. And these errors are because they're saying that we have an undefined index in the view because well i'm talking about specialty and talking about dob and so on remember that these are database so this is the old post code where we're looking at the fields from the form coming over now i'm using the same code in the view part but for the view page we need to use the database related names so i can always just go back to php my admin and refresh myself i know that it's date of birth and email address and contact number and then we have the specialty id situation here so let me just go ahead and change out date of birth email address and contact number all right so i changed those out so results date of birth email address contact number and then i refresh my page and i see here that at least those are fixed but i still have that error on specialty so recall that with specialty because it's in another table what we're really going to see when we select star from the attendee table is just the id so we need to do an inner join on our query that we're passing up so i'm just going to kind of copy this that was done in the above one for all attendees because it's the same query but the inner join always has to come before the where all right so in sql you always do inner join the where is almost always the last thing to come up so let me just go through the change i made select star from attendee and we give attendee an alias i'm calling it a and then we say inner join specialties with an alias of s on both tables a dot specialty id and s dot specialty id so this is what the two tables have in common that's a nice way to look at when how to inner join tables what do the two have in common what they have in common is the specialty id column and then we say where our attendee id is equal to our bound uh, or placeholder so then i go back to view and then i know that well when the whole inner join is done the value is really going to be called a name and just to recap if we go to the specialties table we see name so i'm just going to quickly do that sql statement here so that we can see exactly what happens so that we're not too confused so i'm just going to copy out this sql statement and in php my admin i just went to the sql tab I'm going to replace all that was in there with our SQL statement, except I'm going to actually give this a value and I'm going to give it the value five. And then when I say go, we see the full record coming back. So that is what that row looks like. We see attendee ID, the first name, last name, date of birth, which right now is zeros, email address, contact number, the specialty ID in the attendees table, the specialty ID in the specialty table, and name being name of the specialty. So if we wanted name to be printed, then we have to make reference to name in our code. So going back to the view page, I'm making reference to result with subscript name. So after doing all of those changes, I can now go back to my view record. And if I refresh once more, then I see the correct value being printed right there. Now I just noticed that I have a slight a misalignment with my footer my footer is appearing inside of this card that shouldn't happen more than likely i don't have and there we go so in my view page i copied it over wrongly so if you're experiencing that you can just fix it with me and we just close this div properly and then i refresh and order is restored so let's just review all that we did we modified our attendees page or view attendees page where we're printing out every single attendee that has registered to date and we put on a, a, an action button that allows us to view the details on that specific attendee. This view button is really just an anchor tag firstly and it is linking to our view.php page and it is passing over a query string in the URL called ID. So when we click it, the expectation is that we're looking to see if ID came over in this query string. And if it did, we get the value, run an SQL statement that looks similar to this and bring back the resulting data and then print it back to the screen. Now we did put some code in to say, if the ID value was not in the URL, something else should happen. And what we did was to say, print, the error so 
I'm going to remove. So if we look in the URL, we see view.php and the query string. If I remove just the query string and leave view.php and print, then we see our error message coming up. Please check details and try again. And all of this error, well, everything that it's trying to bind to, it can't bind to. So actually, as a last act, I'm going to flip around this if statement. So I'm going to say, if not is set, meaning if is set, if this doesn't exist, right? So when you put not, you're doing the negative. So if not if set, is set that, then I want to echo this statement, all right? So I'm checking for the negative first. Else, meaning otherwise that it is there. So if not is set means does, if the get ID super, if the get ID in the super variable does not exist, then we echo this error message. Else, we want to do all of this, and I'm going to actually move this, this closing brace, and I'm going to end this whole if block after this div is printed. So I'm going to go after this div, and then I'm going to start a PHP block, and I'm going to say PHP, and close the brace, and then close that PHP block. Now, what this is going to do is actually just say, if the get ID doesn't exist, just print the error message. Otherwise, if it exists, which is what we're hoping for, meaning it's in the URL, then we get the value and we get the result. And in the same if block, because it hasn't closed yet, all of this HTML will be rendered and everything up until this closing um, brace will be done. So if you look, I'm clicking this brace down here and it's kind of highlighting the brace up here. So these braces are connected. So when I refresh this page, if the URL is, is empty, then we're just going to see the error message. We're not going to see any other NAS messages about anything not existing or, or missing or anything like that. And then if I put back the query string, so I say ID is five, then we get back our record. Now I encourage you to play around with this page. You can customize it, make it into a profile page, whatever it is, put some more HTML elements in there. And if you add more details to the database than I had, then you would have a, a more full details page than I do. But essentially the concept remains the same. You pass in the ID as a query string, you get the value, you run your query, and then you print out your results. I hope you found this lesson valuable. And these just remember to have fun as you modify this and customize it to your liking.